Okay. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Um, thank you for having thank me. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we are at Doolato. We really wanted to celebrate um, Community Doula Week and just highlight some of the organizations that we work with around the country um, and just kind of showcase what they do and let people know about what you're doing and um, kind of help educate others about Community Doula programs. So... If you would go ahead and introduce yourself and kind of tell us what organization you're with and just a little bit about that organization. Um, so my name is Celine Ketchum and I work for a community-based doula organization here at Strength-Based Community Change. We have been around since 2010. We started as a pilot program and thankfully we've been going strong for now almost 14 years in April, it'll be 14 years. So awesome. I work as the program manager and then also as the lead doula for the organization. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. And you are, um, your doulas are trained through the Health Connect one? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's how the pilot program started. And because we we love the philosophy and, and just everything that Health Connect one offers, the support as well, we've, we've continued with that. Um, in May, we're also looking forward to being fully accredited through Health Connect One. So they're going to come out here, do a site visit. Okay. And then we're also having our um, next community-based doula training in May, end of May, beginning of June as well. And so all of those doulas will be trained under the same model. Awesome. How often do you do those trainings? So <laughs> it's been years. It's been okay. years since we've done the last one. And because of funding, because of COVID, just, you know, all different mm -hmm. kinds of reasons, we haven't been able to do it. So we're really looking forward to, to offering this one. Yeah. Um, pretty soon. Yeah. That is exciting. So right now, how many doulas do you have working with you? Currently, we have six doulas. So mm -hmm. some of them are like full-time staff doulas. Some of them are interns. But we have a team of six. And then we have additional support people like program assistants and, and family navigators. Awesome. And sort of, so you serve, you've been expanding, right? And you serve a bigger sort of area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So for years, we were just in what we call here in Southern California, like the South Bay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because of a partnership that we have with, with other organizations, we were able to expand to the South LA communities. So yeah, right. we've, we've expanded and, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. We'll continue mm -hmm. to expand. Very awesome. Um, and so right now, I know you said there's some funding. Like, where do you get most of your funding for your program? Does it come from various locations or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I wish I could say it's just, you know, one one source was enough and, and yeah. it was able to sustain our program. But unfortunate, I mean, not for, it's fortunate, thankfully, that right. we have multiple funding sources. Um, so we have... Um, probably like one of the biggest is through a partnership that we have with DCFS. They fund a big portion of our, of our support services. Um, and then we have um, other like smaller donors that are more um, uh, like private funding. And then recently uh, we, we started to launch all of our, our, um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. We, we started to, to take on clients who are just um, Medi-Cal. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, so now we're going to start to be able to get reimbursed for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the Medi-Cal benefit launched in January 2023, um, but because there's been it's just been a little bit difficult to navigate the whole system because it's new mm -hmm. um, and it's Medi-Cal. Um, this month, actually, we just started billing. Um, so Very nice. we're looking yeah, forward, exciting. yeah, we're looking forward to that being another revenue stream to hopefully, mm -hmm. um, help fund the program. Cause right. I'm sure as you know, it's not, you know, we're a nonprofit, so mm -hmm. we have to get funds from, from wherever we can get them because yeah. we feel like our work is important. Definitely. I know that's a lot of work, but like you said, definitely very important. So yes. Yeah. Um, and then I just had my question and lost it. Okay. <laughs> um, and I know usually community doulas sort of work with um, families maybe for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. um, what What is like the average time span that people 
work together with the families? So it varies. We have multiple tiers, but one of the things okay. that we, we really love is that because we're able to work with our clients um, and their families for a longer, longer period of time, we build relationships with them. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them, you know, even stay with us past, um, uh, into when their kids are toddlers and and join other programs that we have here at the agency. But typically for community-based doula services, we start working with them around like the seven month mark. So like Mm -hmm. that last trimester, that's Mm -hmm. the goal. Um, Then we continue without them through the birth and then postpartum, that's where the different tiers come in. So depending on the the family situation, Mm -hmm. we might work with them three months postpartum, six months postpartum, or even extend up until a year postpartum. Maybe we're working with a family who's unhoused, they need additional resources, and they just don't feel comfortable closing at the the three month or the six month mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely nice. It's an option. Yeah, so it just depends. Depends on the family. For sure. But if somebody wanted to start their own community-based doula program, I would definitely say they need a really great support team. I think that's the only way that we're able to do it is because we have mm-hmm. doulas who are, are, you know, in it 110%. They love what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have program assistants. We have family navigators. And so us all coming together makes it um, run pretty seamlessly. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely need a lot of people around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need a great team. Yeah. And people in this field are, you know, usually really passionate about it too. So that helps finding those people that you want to work together. That was actually one of my questions. So you went and had to answer that about (laughs) starting a program and then, um, you know, we probably direct people to that, the health connect one program, right? Because they also partner with, um, people all over the country to, to start our yes. other organizations. Yeah, yeah, and thankfully our our executive director and the director of of our um, family well being program, they're also um, they run a bunch of other programs, but they're also very very supportive of the work that we do, and and they know that it's impactful and that it makes a difference. So um, yeah, you just have to have people that that see what you're doing and and know that it, it makes mm-hmm. a difference. Awesome. Yeah. One last question, like, is there anything you hope to see change in regards to like doula care access or being able to expand these programs? And maybe that's like state specific or just Mm -hmm. things that you've noticed. I mean, I think where we're headed is, is amazing. Um, It's taken a a long time to get here. And I I feel like that's kind of how things happen where there's like a lull and then all of a sudden things, you know, speed up and, um, and start to come together. So I think it's amazing now that just even private doulas can fill um, and and give access to to families who are maybe like a little bit lower income or or have Medi-Cal. Because I feel like everybody deserves access to, to get support and to have Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel, yeah, where we're headed is is great. I I would hope that eventually um, more doctors and 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 people get on board with the work that Mm -hmm. we're doing and and see that we're only there to make their jobs easier, to help them, to support them. uh, mm-hmm. to support their patients, because there is still a little bit of resistance, not as much as there used to be, thankfully, right. um, but there is still some some resistance uh, for like OBGYNs if they see that, that there's mm-hmm. going to be a doula involved or, you know, we've even been told like, you know, oh, I don't work with doulas or I don't want to look at your, your birthing preferences. So mm-hmm. unfortunately that is still happening. Um, so yeah, we just, we hope that that one day, you know, everybody's excited to see us when we yeah. when we come into that space. And for the most part, thankfully, uh, that is the reception that we get. But it, it's you know few and far between. There's there are some that are a little bit resistant to to the work that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I just hope too that funding continues to increase because mm-hmm. currently in California, um, the funding has been been upped for us, but it's this work is hard it's difficult it's taxing mm-hmm. it's emotionally and physically um uh, hard it's it's time away from our families it's mm-hmm. uh you know i'm sure there was doulas yesterday that were at a birth rather than spending mm-hmm. time on on easter with their families so um i hope that eventually we get to the point where it is a livable wage mm-hmm. for doulas because it's it's um 
it's something that makes a difference. So if Absolutely. we're not paying people a livable wage, then they're just not going to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely hard work. It's super rewarding work. Um, yes. It's, it definitely needs to be funded and yeah, be able to pay the doulas for sure. And, mm -hmm. you know, having that, like you're saying, like the bridging the gap of, you know, you're still working with the doctor and you're just bridging mm -hmm. the gap between them and the patient or our client as far as yep. providing those extra resources and just yeah. helping both sides. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, That's all we want to do. We just, right. We just want to help. <laughs> we just want to get everyone a doula, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody who yeah. wants one. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Everyone yeah. deserves one. And these programs are so great. And we just, like I said, we just wanted to highlight you and the work you're Thank doing. You. And um, I know you mentioned you have that upcoming um, the visit from Health Connect One. Is there yeah. any other like exciting programs or events you have coming up that you guys are doing? Yeah. So like I mentioned the training, I mean, that's huge because we haven't mm -hmm. done it in probably like almost 10 years now. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really big. Um, so that's going to train 20 doulas in the community to go out and uh, do what we're doing. They can, yeah. they can be certified community-based doulas. They can build Medi-Cal. It's technically like a career pathway for them. Um, so that's, those are probably the two biggest things that, yeah. that we're looking forward to, um, that have taken some, some planning and some effort to make happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're looking forward to seeing what happens, the growth of their program with the medical reimbursements as well. Hopefully we can bring on more doulas, mm -hmm. um, and then we can continue to just offer support to, to the communities and have it expand exponentially. That's our goal. Great. Those yeah. Sound great goals. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for meeting with me today. And yeah. we'll continue to share your program and share more community dual organizations throughout the week. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Bridget, so much.